kung gusto mo talaga ng power, you can start now by praying in tongues. Walang ibang nakakaalam dito sa will ni God, dito sa wisdom ni God, kung hindi ang Holy Spirit. Yan ang main ministry niya. He reveals the things of God to us. So, ang Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. He knows everything about God. He knows everything. Wala siyang hindi alam because He's the Spirit of God. But He is not going to move. He's not going to do anything unless God tells Him to do it. We have to make this clear within our hearts. Hindi magtatrabaho ang Holy Spirit kung walang revelation kay God the Father. So, pag si God nireveal sa iyo na pinibigay niya ang bahay, work on it. Mag-pray in tongues and mag-pray in tongues and mag-pray in tongues ka because you don't know what to pray. We would like to thank the friends and partners of Terry Chang Ministries. Um, good evening. Kanteng gabi po sa inyong lahat. Ito po si Pastor Terry Chang and I would like to thank you for tuning in to our program Living the Blessing by Terry Chang Ministries. Our topic for today is Jesus has given you life and healing. It's a series of messages. Uh, and uh, today we're on part four with a subtitle of when you, when you pray in tongues, God will speak to you. Wow. Very, very profound. Very profound. Imagine when you pray in tongues, God will speak to you. And I'm going to be sharing this wonderful testimony. Na, um, I don't know kung ito ay uh, na-share ko na or kung kasama ito sa ating mga previous videos. But it's going to explain some of the uh, benefits, hindi lang isa, dalawa. Ang hinihingi ko po, contact your friends, invite your friends, your loved ones, your bosses, or your colleagues at work because they are going to enjoy this message. I mean, it is a transforming message for everyone because it transformed my life. So it is going to transform your life as well. This is going to really open your hearts, your eyes, your ears. Kung paano mag-work itong mga benefits ng salvation ito based on my own experience. How does it work? How, can I explain ko kasi dito, how to apply all the benefits that we learned at makikita po natin dito kung papaano. So it's going to be so much easier for you to apply itong mga Principles involved in praying in tongues. Amen. So, just a very quick uh, recap in benefits of praying in tongues. And pag aralan natin, uh, number one, when you pray in tongues, you receive wisdom. Number two, you speak mysteries. Number three, you enter the spirit realm. Wow, you enter the spirit realm. So, sa mga hindi po, uh, I mean, mga bago ngayon, pwede po kayong pumunta dyan sa YouTube at nandun lahat yung ating mga previous teachings on the benefits, lalong lalo na ito mga binabanggit ko ngayon. You cannot miss out kasi kapag hindi natin naintindihan ito and we cannot even apply it in our personal lives, we're missing out a lot because ito yung susi, mamaya papaliwanag po natin, really the big, big secret of God na inaano sa atin, na dinidisclose or nireveal sa atin ng Panginoon. Amen. Kasi malapit na yung end times. Kailangan makakita tayo talaga ng mga signs and wonders and miracles in our very own lives and in the lives of other people that we touch. Amen. Number four, when you pray in tongues, it gives, it gives you a hotline to God. I mean, you can contact God directly. Number five, it's a perfect prayer. Why? Because the Holy Spirit prays on your behalf. Ilang paulit-ulit ko po ito, when you pray in tongues, it's not actually you who are praying. It's the Holy Spirit putting the words in your mouth, and all you have to do is speak them out. Sinasabi ko, give the words a voice. So the Holy Spirit prays when He prays. Of course, it's a perfect prayer. If it's a perfect prayer, then it is an answered prayer. Amen. Number seven, it gives you divine health and healing. So go to half of our prayer requests, and we get numerous prayer requests every day. Siguro may mga 50 ba tayo? Ano? Every day, marami po kami prayer requests. And uh, siguro majority dito, or maybe half, tungkol sa health issues. So maraming may sakit. Of course, malapit na yung end times. Pinapakita ni Satan na talunan tayo, na defeated tayo. But we're not gonna bow down to him. Kasi tayo mga anak ng Diyos, we have the power and authority over Satan. Sinasabi sa Luke 10, 19, Behold! I give you authority over all serpents and scorpions, meaning over all demonic forces. 
and over every power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Kung ikaw may problema ka sa pera, may problema ka sa health, may problema ka kung ano mang problema mo ngayon. I tell you, pag ikaw ay nagpe praying times, huwag kang mainip kasi nga mamaya, dahil sa testimony ko, maintindihan nyo kung pa anong nangyayari when you pray in tongues. So, maintindihan nyo and you will grasp itong revelation ng Holy Spirit sa inyo. You will have healing in your body. So, huwag matakot yung mga may cancer, yung mga may cardiovascular disease. Huwag kayo matakot because God is giving you the opportunity now to be healed. But, of course, you need to get the revelation. And then, number eight, it builds your most holy faith. Faith is so important because without faith, we cannot please God. So, paano maging pure? But when we pray in tongues, we actually produce the purest faith imaginable in our spirit, in our soul. Amen. Number nine, it keeps yourself in the love of God. And this is so important because faith and love work together. Kung hindi tayo marunong magmahal sa kapwa, hindi tayo marunong magpatawad, hindi tayo marunong, uh, I mean, nandyan pa rin, nag-ooperate pa rin tayo sa mga bitterness and resentment and offense and all that. Hindi tayo magiging successful or victorious in our lives kasi kailangan yung we obey the two greatest commandments, loving God with all our hearts and soul and loving our neighbors as we love ourselves. At itong loving our neighbor, it doesn't matter kung anong ginawa sa'yo. It doesn't matter kung naging unfaithful ang asawa mo. It doesn't matter kung ng utang sa'yo hindi niya binayaran. Wala tayong choice. Dahil yan ang sinabi sa atin ni God and then He will vindicate you he will avenge you and he will make you victorious in every area of your lives. Kasi sumunod ka sa kanya. Amen. It will prosper you in whatever you do. Remember Psalms 1 verses 1 to 2. Sabi niya, Blessed is the man whose delight is in the uh, is in the law of the Lord. And in the law he meditates day and night. I cannot overemphasize itong pag-meditate in the word of God. It's one key. But praying tongues God without the meditation of the word, nothing happens. Why? Because the Holy Spirit can only work, He can only operate through the word that you meditate on. Kung wala kang word, wala. Kasi hindi naman pwede ang Holy Spirit lang mag-work. You have to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Amen. So sabi niya dito sa verse 2, and you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. So hindi yung sabihin talagang fertile na fertile itong Kinalalagyan mo. And then, sabi niya, you will always bear fruit in its season. And then your leaf also shall not wither. And, sabi niya, you will prosper in whatever you do. It's a promise. God is no liar. He is a covenant-making God and a covenant-keeping God. Kung naintindihan natin how He operates, it is not so hard na yung mga pangako niya ay makuha natin. It's just tayo laging lumalaban and laging nag-ooperate tayo sa flash. Mamaya po makikita niyo yan. It's gonna be much easier for you kung pa paano talagang makita natin yung complete victory in our lives. Amen. Amen. Talagang maganda itong aking example na to. You open the door to the prophetic na alala niyo kung paano mag-work sa courts of heaven. Meron tayong Holy Spirit who is our witness. Ibig sabihin siya ang nag-witness natin. Yes, si Terry is the child of God. But sinabi, okay, nagkasala ko, so what? He is a child of God. Automatically, may kapatawaran because I'm adding, uh, uh, see, Jesus is our advocate, he's our lawyer. And then, sasabihin niya sa judge, God the Father, oh, because I died for her, that is why she's now forgiven. That is now she, that is the reason why she has the authority uh, for the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit to work in her life. And she has the, uh, ano, yung, Strength, lahat ng mga benefits ng, salve, ng, ano, ng salvation, kamukha ng divine health and healing, may karapatan siyang gumaling because now she has a child of God and that's the reason why God healed of cancer. Nakailan ba akong cancer and I got healed? Wala akong uh, ano, yung, uh, surgery or anything. Wala, not even medication. Or uh, may karapatan siyang umaman because I died for her. Diba? So yun ang sinasabi ni Jesus, being my lawyer, Siya ang nag, ano sa akin, nag defend And then, ang, ang, ang God the Father, siya ang judge. And then, yung gawel, gaganyan niya. So, wala nang kalaban-laban si Satan. Siya ang aking kalaban dito. Wala na, wala na siyang kalaban-laban. Because sabi ni God, okay, ginawa ni Jesus, pok! So, inano na yung gawel, wala na. And that's the reason why I remain victorious. 
kung naiintindihan natin ang mga principles involved in the kingdom, there is no reason why any one of us na ikaw ay magdusa permanently, na ikaw ay mamatay sa sakit, na ikaw ay mamulubin. No! No, Jesus had already taken that from you. And everything that He has promised is already deposited in your spirit. Nandito na yan. All we have to do is have faith. Maniwala tayo, it's not easy. Yun ang problema yan, it is not easy. But faith comes by hearing and hearing. And that is why kailangan kayo nanunood dito. Kailangan nyo, and it's not enough to listen to this. Like for example, itong message ko once. Kailangan pa ulit, ulit, pa ulit, ulit, pa ulit, ulit, pa ulit. Katulad ko, pag magtuturo ako, pa ulit, pa ulit, pa ulit. Ilang araw kong piniprepare yan. Kaya nabibuild ang aking faith. Kaya akong una-una actually nabibenefit dito. Yung teacher or preacher, yan na una-una nabibenefit. Because pa ulit ulit namin pinag-aaralan, pinag-aaralan. Amen. So it empowers you. Alam niyo yung power, di ba? Sabi niya, the Holy Spirit will come and then you will be endued with power. On high, from on high. You will be endued. Ibig sabihin ng endued, to be clothed with power. Last time, pinakita ko po sa inyo itong power na to. Para kang isang police officer na nakasuot dito sa uniform. At dahil naka-uniform ka, kit, pwedeng pwede kang mag-stop. Stop mo itong napakalaking truck or whatever at ihinto lahat, ihinto lahat ang sasakyan ay pag ginanon ng pulis ang kanyang kamay. Why? Because he has the authority. He has the power and he has the authority. Pero kung halimbawa wala na ang uniform yan, kahit tumayo siyang ganyan, magkakagulo lang ang traffic flow kasi wala siyang uniform, hindi siya ito trust ng mga tao. It's the same way with us. You cannot see me in that uniform. I'm wearing that clothes. You cannot see me. Why? Because what I'm wearing is a spiritual. It's a spiritual. Kaya lang, the enemy can see that clothes. The enemy can see that power. So, kuido siya sa akin. Especially if I exercise that power. Amen? Hindi ako maglulugong mag-iiyak sa problema. No! I'm gonna fight back. Pag alam ko, temporary lang. Yung kung ano man ang problema ang nakikita ko. Because, hindi, nobody is immune to challenges, to problems. Nobody's immune to it. Even coming mga preachers, mga pastors, mga teachers, mga evangelists, lahat yan nagkakaroon ng the same problems. Exactly the same problems. But, kapag ikaw ay nag-hold on sa pangako ni Lord, hindi masyadong tatagal ang mga problema. Amen. At alam mo kung paano labanan ito sa satanas na ito and his cohorts, hindi lalala yung problema. Amen. Mawawala ka dyan. Magkikita niyo po sa testimony ko mamaya. So it empowers you. It is the most powerful weapon against the enemy. So when you pray in tongues, it is, praying in tongues is the most powerful weapon against the enemy. Pinag-aralan po natin sa Ephesians 6 verses 13 to 20, itong full armor of God. Yung full armor, it is so important, extremely important, kasi hindi ka nga pwede mag-operate dito sa mundo successfully, victoriously, without the Word of God. Pag-aaralan natin yung mga six weapons in the arsenal, actually seven. But yung first six weapons, they all talk about the Word of God. Katulad ng helmet of salvation, or breastplate of righteousness, the shoes for the preparation of the gospel of peace, or yung shield of faith, yung belt of truth, or yung uh, sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Kung pag-aaralan natin lahat yan, they all pertain to the Word of God. It's so important because the Word of God is Jesus Himself. And Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Way siya ang daan, siya ang katotohan, at siya ang life. Siya ang magbibigay sa atin ng buwan. That's why He says in John 10, that I have come to give you life. And life is, paano ka magkakalife kung ikaw may sakit, may cancer? Paano mo? Death ang pupuntahan niyan. Or nahihirap ka sa pera, hindi ka makabayad ng utang. Half, literally, half ng mga prayer requests namin, ay tungkol naman po sa mga financial issues. You don't have to stay in those financial issues at all. Kailangan lang i-apply lang po itong mga tinuturo natin. If we spend more time dito sa panunood ng TV or uh, like pag-text sa mga kung sino-sino yan, if we spend more time, yun ang makukuha mo because what you sow is what you reap. But if you spend more time on the Word of God, ano mangyayari? Yung life ni Jesus pupunta sa iyo. That's why you don't question, bakit ganito pang buhay ko hindi nagbabago? You ask yourself, what have you been doing for these last many years? You ask yourself, bakit ka baon na baon sa utang ngayon? Because you didn't have wisdom. Ako na baon din sa utang, if you remember. Million, million, because I was in business. But because binigyan ako ng wisdom ni God, kaagad na kaalis kami dyan. 
and it was supernatural it was nothing natural at all it was supernatural that's the way the holy spirit works amen so itang weapon na to ito yung sinabi yung seventh weapon sinasabi dito sa Ephesians 6 and this is found in verse 18 praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit so praying pay particular attention to the underlying words in the spirit so praying always in the spirit yan ang number seventh weapon so in other words if you focus on the word lang focus on the word lang and you don't pray in tongues wala din why because paano mo makukuha yung power if you don't even commune with the holy spirit the holy spirit tells you okay there you go you've been baptized in the holy spirit you pray in tongues so that i can help you if I don't cooperate with the Holy Spirit, what do you expect from the Holy Spirit? Wala. Kaya yung mga iba, nakakakuha sila ng 0, 30, 60, sometimes 100. Bakit? Depende. Depende sa relationship natin with God the Father. So itong TCM ito, itong trabaho namin sa TCM, puro po pagmamahal ito, puro pagmamahal. Nakita nyo uh, yung mga staff namin, grabe, yung kinukwento nga ni Neil, niya na kung paano sila talaga mag-pus... Daan-daan mga tao yung mga kinukontact nila. Yan ay pagmamahal. They don't even have to do that. Hindi ko sinasabing gawin nila yan. Silang kusang nagsasabi niya because they really want people to... Gusto nilang ma-transform ang mga buhay ng mga taong ito. It's not because of the rewards. It's because nasa kanila si God the Father, nasa kanila si Jesus, nasa kanila ang Holy Spirit. At God is love. So, dahil nasa kanila, punong-puno sila ng pag-ibig na express back nila ito sa kanila mga, sa mga tao. Amen? So, tingnan mo, being watchful to this end with all perseverance. Ito yung point natin. You have to persevere. Pastora, we've been studying about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I've been praying in tongues for many months and I still don't get it or I still don't see the manifestations of the blessings. Well, you have to persevere. You have to persevere because it's 100% guaranteed. God will never lie to you. He was the one who uh, put all these words in those, I know, the mga writers. But every word in the Bible is spirit filled. It is God breathed. You have to persevere because everybody goes through tests. Tulad ako, mamaya, kukwento ko yung mga tests na dadaanan. Grabe yung mga test na yan. Parang grade 1 ka, okay. Magpipray in tongues sa grade 1 ka. Gusto mo mabayaran yung mga milyon-milyon dito. May utang kang 1 million. Ngayon nandito ka sa baba. Nag-expect ka ba? Automatically, mag-flow yung pera dyan? No! God will teach you. He will give you wisdom para ikaw maging successful. Hindi binigyan ka ng pera. Punwari, pagkatapos hindi mo na alam ang gagawin mo, naubos lang. Maraming nanalo sa lotto, maraming nanalo sa mga swift stakes na naghirap, mabilis pa sa alas 4 because they know what to do with their money. So, for example, ako, nagkaraming uh, mga problema sa pera na talagang completely broke, punong-puno ng utang. Because I didn't know how to operate in the kingdom of God. Nandadaya, nagsisunungan, lahat pwede namin gawin because I didn't have Jesus on the inside of me. Pero nung nalaman ko itong mga principles na to, kung paano kung biglang naging millionaire, at uh, 19 years old, in apply ko yon, But applying at the same time the principles that are mentioned in the Bible, dati wala akong, wala akong takot sa Diyos. I didn't even believe there was a God. Kaya napaka-importante po na mag-persevere. And then supplication for all the saints. Nag-pray ka ba sa mga, uh, sa mga other people? Sa mga saints? Ibig sabihin ng mga saints, yun ang mga born-again Christians, pinagpipray mo natin. O sarili lang natin ang pinagpipray natin. O family lang natin ang pinagpipray natin. So, don't expect to receive a lot of blessings if you only think of yourself. Kaya gusto ni Lord, masanay tayo sa kaharian ng Diyos na kung saan nagmamahal sa Panginoon at nagmamahal, nagmamahal tayo sa kapwa natin. Amen? Okay. So, yun ang arsenal. Seven weapons in the arsenal dapat natin ina-apply yan. It's actually not that hard kung tayo ay punong-puno ng Holy Spirit dahil with the Holy Spirit comes His power. So may power tayo to do the impossible. Itong akin testimony, it's about, uh, about nothing is impossible to God and nothing is impossible to me who believes. Amen. Yan yung, yung aking inexplain dito na lang. Yung lang na yan ay si Jesus. Para maintindihan natin ang illustration. 
Ang lamp na yan is Jesus. So for example, nasa in complete darkness ka, ay, mamamatay ka na kasi uh, metastasize na to the bones, to the lungs, to the brain, ang yung cancer. So in total darkness ka na. Talaga kukunin ka na ng spirit of death. May pag-asa. Ito si Jesus. So, yan ang word of God, di ba? But it's not enough kasi hindi naman magla-light up kung walang oil yan. So, kailangan il maglagay ng oil. Sino maglalagay ng oil? Hmm? Kung meron lang, kung nandito lang kayo, magbibigay ako talagang premium 5,000 pesos pag mahulaan nyo. Kailang wala kayo dito, so wala na akong premium ibibigay. Ang maglalagay ng oil ay si ikaw. Tama? Mali! Ang maglalagay ng oil ay si God the Father. Siya magpapadala ng Holy Spirit sa iyo. Ang oil na ito is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. And with the Holy Spirit, of course, comes His power. Okay, so, pag ikaw na born again, so, bibigyan ka nito ng Word of God, which is itong Bible na to, ito yung Word of God, papasok sa iyo si Jesus on the inside of you, kaya lang na born again ka, wala ka pang alam. Kaya, gusto ni God, magbasa tayo ng Bible. Gusto niya, magbasa tayo laki ng Bible para maintindihan natin kung ano yung gusto niyang gawin natin. And then, siya ay magbibigay sa iyo ng Holy Spirit. Yan. Kamay ni God. Dinagay niya yan dito sa vessel. Tapos, ito na. Kompleto na siya. Meron na siyang word. Meron na siyang Holy Spirit. Nasa yung ngayon yan. Because you receive Jesus and you receive the Holy Spirit in your spirit. Nasa spirit mo yan. But, pastora, bakit hindi ko pa hinakikita yung mga manifestations and blessings? It is because hindi mo sinisindi yung ilaw. Ikaw mo may responsibility na magsindi dito dito sa match na to. Para mag-ilaw. So, sisindihan mo, ayan, nakasindi na. Ngayon, may light na siya. But it is your responsibility. Ano yung pagsindi ng light na yan? It's meditating in the Word of God and praying in tongues. Yung sinabi natin, how to defeat the enemy, yung arsenal na yan, hindi pwedeng Word of God lang, kailangan may Holy Spirit. Amen. So, ayan siya. So, ngayon, yung darkness mo, yung darkness mo, mamamatay ka na, all of a sudden, nagka-ilaw. Nagka-revelation. Ang ilaw na is revelation. Pag nakuha mo yung revelation, that's it. You've got it. So, kailangan natin ilawan yan. And sometimes, it takes time. Kasi hindi natin naintindihan. Gusto ni Lord, mag matuto tayo because faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. Kailangan pag-aralan talaga natin ang Bible. And we try to make it much easier for you, kasi ina-explain namin kung yung revelation na nakukuha namin, ina-explain namin dito sa Zoom Live. So, we expect talagang magkakaroon ng transformation ng mga buhay ng aming mga friends and partners at yung ating mga audience. Amen. Yung ating mga kapatid na nag, nag aten sa atin. Amen. So, katulad din ng Meralco, another illustration, like, nagpagawa ka ng bahay. So, walang ilaw sa bahay. Tapos na yung bahay, kompleto na. So, walang ilaw. So, mag-a-apply ka sa Meralco. Tama? So, ang miracle ngayon, i-coconnect niya yung mga kable na yan. Siyempre, maraming kable yan hanggang makarating dito sa bahay mo. Yan. Kaya lang, ayan, nasa kadiliman, itong kwarto, itong kwarto ito, nasa kadiliman, for example, hindi mo nakikita kasi wala, kasi hindi mo sinisindi. Hindi mo sinisindi yung ilaw. Pero pag sinindi mo, all of a sudden, nagka-ilaw. So, ito is your responsibility. It is not the responsibility of miracle. Ang meral ko, i-coconnect ko sa supply ng kuryente, and that's it. Sa so, tatawag ka, wala pong ilaw, wala pong ilaw. Sasabihin ng meral ko, well, kino, sinupply na namin yan. Responsibility mo na yan. So, ikaw ang magpipindot nito, hindi meral ko staff. Amen. So, yan, may ilaw. So, ito, walang ilaw, ito, may ilaw. Ayan. So, benefit number, so this brings us to benefit number 14. When you pray in tongues, God will speak to you. Ito yung ating topic Pero may combination yan ng five other uh, benefits. Pero ito yung main. When you pray in tongues, God speaks to you. So nakita natin ito sa Isaiah 28.11. For with foreign lips and strange tongues. So very clearly, foreign lips, hindi mo naintindihan. It's a foreign language. is a heavenly language. And strange tongues. It's strange kasi hindi mo naintindihan. He will speak to these people. Sino yung people? Those are the people who pray in tongues. So, if you pray in tongues, God will speak to you. Okay. 1 Corinthians 14, 18. And this talks about Paul. Ano sabi ni Paul? 
I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. Ano sabi niya? I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. Paano nakakasigurado si Paul na siya ay nag-speak in tongues more than anybody else, including the apostles or the disciples of Jesus? He was speaking in tongues daw more than anybody else. Well, pag-aaralan natin ng kunti itong buhay ni Paul. Kilala po natin si Paul. Si Paul ay uh, was a very, very influential man during his time because he came from a very well-off family. He came from Tarsus. And Tarsus, ang lugar na yun, ay very prominent, very affluent, parang Paris and London ng, uh, uh, during the olden days. Kung nang, paano mo nakita yung London or Paris or New York, ganyan ang Tarsus noon. So, mga mayayaman nandun, yung business, talaga yung mga enterprises niya, talagang lucrative. Kahit ano, mabubuhay ang negosyo doon. And ang parents niya, dahil mayaman, so, dinala si Paul dito kay uh, Gamaliel. And Gamaliel was the best. He was the super, super best teacher sa Sanhedrin. Ibig sabihin ng Sanhedrin, dito yung council kung saan itong mga Pharisees ay nag-ooperate from. And, dito yung, and the head was the high priest. So, si Paul, because he was so smart, matalino, matalino siya, di ba? But he was a Pharisee. He was a member of the Sanhedrin. So, ang gusto ng Sanhedrin, maniwala yung mga tao dito sa kanilang mga laws, dito sa laws ng Old Testament, kung, kung ano-anong laws na, na pina, inaano nila, ini-impose nila, ang gusto ni Jesus Christ, maniwala sila sa grace ni Jesus, di ba yan? So, nagkakaroon ng conflict ng dalawa. So, ang ginagawa ng mga Pharisees, katulad ni Paul, pinapapatay nila itong mga Christians. So, ngayon, at one point in time, Si Paul ay pupunta ng Damascus kasi nabalitaan niya maraming Christians doon. Gusto niya pagpapapatayin kasi pe-persecute yung mga Christians doon. At alam natin ng story, di ba? So Jesus showed up and then he asked Paul, Paul, why are you persecuting me? Di ba? Na, na, nakita natin. And then he sent Ananias to him. He laid it, nabulag na dito si Paul. Tapos uh, nilay hands ni Ananias at siya ay nakikita muli. But with this story, makikita natin na si Paul didn't get born again through Ananias. Paul got born again through Jesus, directly from Jesus. And then, na baptized in the Holy Spirit through Jesus. Why? Because ito yung sinasabi niya. In Galatians 1.11, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, ito yung brothers and sisters, mga Galatians ito, but we are the present day Galatians, so this word is applicable to us. Amen. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel I preached is not of human origin. Tina mo, ang kanyang gospel na pinipreach ay hindi nang galing daw sa tao. Hindi nag-originate sa tao. And then he explains in verse 12, I did not receive it from any man. Kita natin? I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Ibig sabihin, walang nagturo sa kanya. Kahit mga apostoles, kahit mga disciples ni Jesus, walang nagturo kay Paul. And sabi niya, rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. So he received the revelation directly from Jesus Christ. Makita nyo? And in Galatians, in the next verse, no, two verses away, Galatians 1.15, sabi niya, But when God called me by His grace, so very clear, inaamin niya, ina niya, that he was not deserving of the trust and confidence in Jesus for him to preach the gospel. Kaya lang, by God's grace, Ibig sabihin, unearned, unmerited, undeserved favor ang binigay ni God sa kanya. Kasi pumapatay siya ng tao. He was a very, very, he was an evil man actually. Sabi niya, he, si God ito, was pleased to what? To reveal his son in me so that I might preach him among the Gentiles. So siya nang binigyan ng responsibility. Si na Peter, yung mga may bang apostolos yan, yung mga disciples yan, ang pinipreach sila sa mga Jewish people. But Paul was the first one who was assigned to preach among the Gentiles. Then my immediate response was not to consult any human being. Tingnan mo si Paul, ayaw niyang makinig sa tao. Gusto niya makinig lang kay, kay God the Father or kay Jesus the Holy, of course, by the Holy Spirit. Gusto niya diretso ang pakikinig niya para mas precise ang kanyang maririnig. So to be able to do this, the Holy Spirit led him to Arabia. Tingnan po natin. I did not go up, Galatians 1 verse 17, I did not go up to Jerusalem to see those who were apostles before I was. Ano sabi niya? I did not go up to Jerusalem. Hindi siya pumunta sa Jerusalem para magpaturo. 
or magtanong ng questions about Jesus Christ or about the gospel. Hindi siya nagpunta kahit kanino. But sabi niya, but I went into Arabia. Ano ginawa niya sa Arabia? Later, I returned to Damascus. Itong Arabia na to, uh, is not the uh, the Saudi Arabian Peninsula that we know today. In Arabia na to was much, much bigger kasi kasama ito yung Jordan, kasama yung Syria. In fact, Damascus is Syria. So nagpunta siya, I returned to Damascus, sabi niya. Then after three years, Galatians 18, then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem. Dito palang mag-start ang kanyang ministry after three years. So, anong nangyari sa Arabia sa kanya? Why was Paul able to write two-thirds or three-fourths of the epistles? Naku, napaka namin, asan na ba yun? Yan. Siyang sumulat sa Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Titus, Philemon. At hindi kasama dito yung Hebrews, pero ang sabi ng mga Bible experts, siya rin na nagsulat ng Hebrews. So, 14 epistles. Si, makita nyo, literally, more than half of the New Testament, he was the one who wrote. At ano sinabi niya? The revelation came directly from Jesus Christ. At ngayon, for the last 2,000 years, pinag-aaralan ng mga Christians itong librong ito, itong mga librong ito. Even today, at this moment in time, ang tinuturo ko galing dito sa New Testament, and most of it, ang nagsulat ay si Paul. Bakit ganyan ka-powerful? What did he do in Arabia? Ang mala, they didn't explain in the Bible. The Bible doesn't explain kung ano ginawa niya exactly sa Arabia. But one thing, ito yung sinabi eh. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. So ang very, very powerful si Paul. Meron siyang unusual miracles na hindi binigay kahit kanino. O Peter, yung shadow niya, okay, nagpapagaling ng mga tao. But kay, kay uh, Paul, ito yung ginagawa. So that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick. And the diseases left them. So, now what? Nung, so, kumuha ng panyo, for example, itong panyo na to, o oh, itong tissue na to, pagkatapos, ang mga, ang mga tao, pupunta kay Paul, at papahiran, like, gaganyan din si Paul, tapos pupunta sa may sakit, na, papahiran na may sakit, at gumagaling, sabi niya, and the diseases left them. And the evil spirits went out of them. So, makikita natin dito, talaga ang mga nagkukos ng mga sagyan ng mga evil spirits, but not 100%. Kasi meron tayong, merong mga pwedeng uh, genetic issues or pwedeng masya, ma, ano, matigas ang ulo mo, kain ka ng kain o kano, at ang tumaas ang kolesterol mo, bumala sa puso mo. Not necessarily tinutok sa kanis Satan. Ikaw ang may responsibility niyan because there's nothing that Satan can do to force you to eat more than you should. Okay. So, makikita natin dito, Paul was a very, very powerful man. And ang secret niya, ayan, alam, for example, ayan ang panyo, o. Oh. Yan si Paul, kukunin niya, tapos ipapahid dito sa may sakit at gagaling. Yan. And si Paul, yan, mga sila, nagpapahiran sa kanya at gumagaling mga tao. Anong secreto niya? I thank my God, I speak with tongues more than you all. So alam natin ngayon na for three years in Arabia, that was what Paul did. Yun ang ginawa ni Paul doon. Mag-pray in tongues, mag-pray in tongues. At sulat siya ng sulat ng sulat because the Holy Spirit was revealing things to him na pinag-aaralan natin ngayon 2,000 years later. Can you imagine? The secret to complete power ay nandito sa kamay natin and we're not even taking advantage of it. Amen. So, uh, tapos di mo, uh, itong kanyang suffering na to, he endured. He was the most persecuted a Christian leader in the history of the Bible. He was kidnapped, he was beaten, he was threatened, he was arrested, he was accused, he was interrogated, he was abused, he was harassed, he was shipwrecked, he was bitten by a viper, he was in prison, and then finally he was killed. But alam nyo, all through these sufferings sa dinadaanan niya, ni minsan hindi mo siya marinig na mag-complain, ni minsan hindi mo siya marinig magsabing walang peace. In fact, he was greeting everyone with peace and grace. Because why? He was filled with the Holy Spirit. Hindi siya nag-asaw, hindi siya nag-anak because he offered his entire life for God. Amen. So, tayo, ano bang ginagawa natin? Hindi uh, ko sinasabing gayahin natin si Paul. But I mean, kung gusto mo talaga ng power, you can start now by praying in tongues. Sabi ko, five minutes is not exactly enough. At least mga 30 minutes siya na day. Amen. So, itong aking testimony, I call it the 
1D and uh, okay. So, uh, bago po ako mag-start, ito ay isang bahay na, isa sa mga bahay na binigay sa amin ni Lord. And it was just impossible for us to own such a house. Impossible! Because we didn't have money to pay for this house. But it was supernatural. So, binigay ni Lord sa amin yan, including mga renovation, because we renovated this house and it took us over a year, probably one and a half years, bago natapos yan. Because it's a big property, it is about 8,000 square feet or 800 square meters. Okay, so papakita ko muna po yung picture sa inyo para maintindihan nyo, uh, it was not like this before, the renovation. So maraming terrain yan. So may, mamaya uh, makikita nyo, yan ang aking, ito take note of this uh, driveway kasi yan ay, uh, anyway, mamaya ako papaliwanag yan. Yan ang, yan ang very, very important itong driveway na to. Okay, yan ang bahay, merong first, yeah, ground floor, first floor, second floor, and ganyan ang tawag dito sa Hong Kong. Um, maring sabihin natin ito ay ground floor, tapos second floor, third floor, and rooftop. Okay? So, yan ang uh, side view ng bahay ito. May, may, may uh, dalawang levels ito. Uh, yung uh, upper level, ito yung uh, lower level. Dito, yan ang waterfall ito ng swimming pool. May ikot ang tubig sa swimming pool niyan. Ako, ako yung nag-design yan uh, to the help of a uh, an architect. Very, very prominent architect. So, yan ang bahay, nasa likod. And, ito yung uh, garden, makikita nyo. Ayan. Napakaganda. In fact, na mahilig ako talaga mag-worship, mag-praise kay Lord dito sa aking garden. Because it's a very, very beautiful garden. Nakita nyo, flourishing lahat ng mga alaman niyan because meron akong piping music. May music everywhere. Pag ako nag-praise, inoon ko yung praise and worship music, lahat ng halaman maririnig. Kaya sila talaga nag-glow. Vibrant ang aking atmosphere dito sa bahay na to. Yan. Now, take note of this area. Itong area na to ay yan ang magiging uh, point ng aking testimony. Huh? Mamaya, papaliwanag natin. Yan ang garden. Yan ang, uh, of course, garden pa rin yan. Ito yung jacuzzi. Yan. Ito yung yan, jacuzzi. Ito yung uh, meron kaming billiard area. Ito yung pavilion. Tapos, ayan ang billiard area. At nandito tayo ngayon sa upper uh, level. So, ngayon, bababa siya sa lower level. Ayan ang hagdan. And dito yung uh, area kung saan uh, may basketball court chain or something, yung waterfalls banda dito. Nakita nyo yung mga ginamit ko, mga Italian, uh, ano ang mga ginamit ko dyan? Tiles, Italian, tiles, very, very expensive ang mga ginamit ko. Ta, ito, may tenta ko dito. Ayan ang court, ayan ang waterfalls, ayan ang swimming pool, ayan, nakikita nyo, ayan. Nandiyan ang swimming pool, ayan, swimming pool, ayan. So, ito yung sa loob ng bahay, ayan ang yeah, dining area tsaka kitchen yun. Ito yung living room. Italian lahat ang gamit ko. Very, very expensive stuff. Okay, yan ang, yan ang family room. Yung kanina, ito is the living area. Living room ito, yan. So, ito, aakit sa taas. Ito yung family room, yan. Pagkatapos, ito yung bedroom, a boy's room. Ito yung girl's room. Ito yung master's bedroom sa taas. Ito yung office ni Robert. Pagkatapos, yan ang master's toilet. Yan ang rooftop kung saan ako na, nag-i-enjoy mga tao, kinukuhanan po ng mga commercial itong bahay na to, yung mga eye cable, yung mga ano, pinapalabas sa TV, for example, for three months in a row, pinapakita yung mga bahay namin. So, like, unbelievable ang ginawa ni Lord to think na wala naman kami pera. And yet, God gave this to us supernaturally. ba So, uh, yan ang uh, rooftop, yan ang, yan, overlooking the, ano, the garden. Amen. So, ang point ko dito is, was one time, to na mag-start yung aking testimony, there was one time na nandito ako sa loob ng room, ng master's bedroom. So, banda rito, hindi natin nakikita, ay meron akong table. And I was praying in tongues. This room is my secret place. So, I'll praying in tongues ako, walang tikin yan. So, I have been, this happened about seven years ago, yung testimony na yan, took place about seven years ago, which means I've been a Christian for 25 years now. So, matagal na ako nagpipray in tongues. Probably uh, 13 years bago mangyari ito. So, praying in tongues, every day praying in tongues, praying in tongues, day and night praying in tongues. And then, all of a sudden, narinig ko ang voice ng Holy Spirit. And I knew it was the Holy Spirit because yung sinabi niya couldn't have come from me or it couldn't have come from the devil. And sabi niya sa akin, Terry, kumuha ka ng lot index plan. Ang lot index plan is something like this. You know, uh, nakalagay yung perimeter wall, nakalagay yung 
plano ng bahay. Pero black and white lang ang binibigay sa Hong Kong sa lot in that plan. So parang ganito, ito yung uh, ito yung tinatawag na landscape concept plan ng aking garden. Dito yung swimming pool, dyan ang pavilion, dito yung bahay. Uh, so ganyan ang uh, dinesign ng architect. Huh? So nandito ako, sabi ko bakit kaya? Bakit kaya pinapakuha ko ng lot index plan ni God? Mung makita kung paano mong i-design yan. Kakausapin mo ang architect for that, but my house is done. It's been done for, for many, many years already. Bakit kailangan ko ng lot index plan, di ba? Pero ang Holy Spirit, you don't question. You just obey. I knew better than to question Him. Of course, yung aking flesh nagtatanong, ba't kaya ako kailangan maghanap ng lot index plan? So anyway, pumunta ako sa kabilang room that... Uh, Si Robert was here. This is his office. Sabi ko sa kanya, Daddy, meron ka bang copy ng lot index plan? In in an instant, binigyan niya sa akin ang copy niya. Si Robert is very, very, very organized. Very smart guy. Isang segundo lang, nandiyan na na-print na niya itong uh, lot index plan ng 1D. So, and he gave it to me. Then I went back to my room and put it down on the table. And then I started examining this floor plan. So, in other words, pag may sinabi ang Holy Spirit, go to work. Wag kang magpapatay-patay because may perfect timing si Lord. If you miss that, you miss everything. So I knew better than disobey. So pinag-aralan ko, it took me an hour. There was nothing there in the plan that caught my eye. So ngayon, ano na ako, struggle na ako. Back to praying in tongues. Alara ba, kasyam ba, rinikish, barana, sanda ba. So pray ako ng tongues for about 15 minutes. And then I prayed with my understanding. It's been with my mind, Holy Spirit. Pinag-aralan ko itong lot index plan, but wala naman akong makita dito that really, uh, like, parang sinasabing, meron akong dapat malaman. Could you help me? And then, sabi ng Holy Spirit, get a magnifying glass. So, kumuha ko ng magnifying glass at ginanon ko, eksaktong, eksakto yung magnifying glass, tum, dito siya, dito sa mismong area kung saan ma-re-reveal, ma kung saan ganda revelation ng tinainaan natin, God, reveals things to us, di ba? Uh, he speaks to us. So, pag ganyan ko ng uh, magnifying glass, nandun siya diretso doon sa area na kung saan sinasabi ni Lord na uh, pinosess ng kapitbahay ang isang portion ng aking lupa. Okay, mamaya po makikita natin. So, ayan, balik ako dito sa Master's Bedroom. Dito naman ako kinakausap ni Lord. So, which brings us to kasi habang sinishare ko yung testimony na to, is share ko yung mga benefits. Benefit number 15, when you pray in tongues, God reveals things to you. That's exactly what He did. He revealed to me na meron pa lang nakuhang isang area dito sa aking property, itong kapitbahay. Amen. Uh, and tingnan po natin ang, ang mga scriptures that confirm that the Holy Spirit reveals things to us. But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit, which means God has revealed that to me through, the, through His Spirit. So, Holy Spirit ang nagsabi sa akin, ang nag-reveal sa akin, ang, ang si God ang nag-reveal sa akin by His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, and yes, the deep things to God. So, ang Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. He knows everything about God. He knows everything. Wala siya hindi alam because He's the Spirit of God. But He is not going to move. He's not going to do anything unless God tells him to do it. For example, sinabi niya, let there be light. And then, the Holy Spirit started working. And there was light. Or let there be a firmament amidst the waters. And it was so because the Holy Spirit made the firmament come forth. We have to make this clear within our hearts. Hindi magtatrabaho ang Holy Spirit kung wala revelation kay God the Father. So pag si God nireveal sa'yo, na binibigyan niya ang bahay, work on it. Mag-pray in tongues and mag-pray in tongues and mag-pray in tongues ka. Because you don't know what to pray. Mamaya makikita natin yan. So anyway, in verse 11, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 11, Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Walang ibang nakakaalam dito sa will ni God, dito sa wisdom ni God, kung hindi ang Holy Spirit. Okay? And then, in the next verse, verse 12, 1 Corinthians 2, Now we have received the Spirit who is from God. Well, if you are a born-again Christian, you must have received Jesus Christ, right, in the Holy Spirit. And they dwell on the inside of you. They are in your spirit. So the Holy Spirit is within you right now. Amen. That 
Pag, alimbawa, na born again ka, and you don't even know that, wala, hindi makakapag-operate ng Holy Spirit sa iyo because, well, hindi, hindi mo alam. At kailangan ma-reveal sa iyo yan. And that is why God sends preachers para ma-reveal sa inyo, para makapag-work kayo uh, hand in hand with the Holy Spirit that we might know the things that have been freely given to us. So now, this house was freely given to me. This property was freely given to me. Buong-buo. Kaya lang, merong taong kumuha ng isang maliit na portion. Okay. The main ministry of the Holy Spirit to each and every one of us is revelation. Yan ang main ministry niya. He reveals the things of God to us. And there are two things the two things that the Holy Spirit reveals to us. One is God's will for us. And we know the will of the Father. It's all found in the Bible. Is it the will of the Father? Is it the will of God for us to get healed? Yes. Sinabi niya, by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. Is it the will of the Father for us to, to be uh, financially prosperous? Yes. Sabi niya, God has blessed us exceedingly, abundantly above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that works in us, according to the power of faith, actually. Kung wala kang faith, simpa, kahit na binigay niya sa'yo, you are not going to see the manifestations of this because it's all by faith. So, will ba ni God na uh, ang asawa mong umalis ay bumalik sa'yo? Yes, gusto niya laging nag-reconcile ang family. So, huwag kayo mawala ng pag-asa. Gusto ba niya na ang mga anak natin mag mag-exam sa kanilang pag-aaral and will have a very, very good career in the future? Yes, will ni God the Father. Will ba ni God the Father na ang church ay magkaroon ng sariling sanctuary na hindi sila nagbabayad ng renta every month? Yes! In fact, ang real estate is something that God gives to us, to every child of God. Dapat meron yan, real property. That, kung maintindahan natin ang history ng, uh, ni God dito sa Bible, that was the first thing that He gave to the first man and woman that he created, si Adam and Eve. Anong binigay sa kanya? Garden. It is a property. Garden of Eden. Anong binigay kay Abraham? Lupa. Vast land. Sabi niya, as far as your eyes can see. Anong binigay kay Isaac? Nung panahon ng famine, may drought. Binigay niya lupa. At itong lupa ito ay nag-prosper beyond measure. Bakit? Kahit may famine. Why? Because God gave him wisdom. Kung paano, kung saan niya makita yung mga wells na yan, kaya naging mayamang mayaman si Isaac. Or see, ano, yung promised land. It is a land flowing with milk and honey. Yan ang binibigay dito sa mga 2 to 3 million people na tinanggal niya, dinilifer niya out of Egypt, out of bondage from Egypt, at dadalhin niya dito sa promised land. It's land. So kung ikaw ay wala kang bahay at lupa ngayon, well, you pray in tongues because God has already given it to you. It's already in your spirit. Kailangan lang you have to see the revelation and the manifestation will come forth after the revelation. Amen? Okay. And then, so, it's well. And ano pa yung God's will for us? Will ba ni God tayo maging bitter? Will ba ni Lord na tayo mag-complain? Is it His will for us to be, uh, like, uh, angry, to hate people, to be resentful, to be uh, lazy? Mga ganyan? Hindi niya will yan. Ang will niya, uh, will ba niya na for us to love? Will ba niya for us to care for other people? Will ba niya na for us to love God with all our hearts? Will niya yan? So in other words, alam natin ang will ni God through the Bible. It's all there written in the Bible. Alam natin ang will. All you have to do is read the Bible and then you will know God's will for us. But mayroong isang bagay pa na the Holy Spirit reveals to us, which is the second thing, God's hidden wisdom. Ano ba itong God's hidden wisdom? Ito yung, like, pupunta ako sa, for example, pupunta ako sa, America. You plan. Okay, pupunta ako sa America. You got the visa and everything. Yun ba ay plan na Lord sa'yo? Nagtanong ka ba, nag-inquire ka about the Holy Spirit, whether that is His plan for you? Misa, pinipilipit natin ang kamay ni God para bigay sa atin. And even God does not want to give it to you dahil alam niyo mapapahama ka. For example, ikaw ay pupunta sa America, tapos ng babae ngayon yung asawa mo dito. Or, uh, will ba ni Lord na ikaw ay magta-transfer from one company to another because this company is giving you a better package, better pay? Pagkatapos, yung mga nakita na ako dyan, naging miserable ang buhay nila more than anything because they didn't obey God. Yan ang wisdom, yan pinipigay na wisdom sa atin. At kasama dito sa wisdom na yan, itong aking testimony. Amen. Uh, this is very important. Kasi itong sinasabing lupa, you'll be amazed kung ano itong sinasabi ni Lord sa akin. But, this is just a small picture, big, big, big picture dito, but small picture. Ito yung property 
four to five square meters ang sinabi ni Lord na kinuha nitong aking kapitbahay. But it's very, very strategic itong five uh, square meters na to kasi mag-stretch forth ito para maintindihan natin. Ayan, ayan siya. So, nag-build itong town na to ng Lanai area, tiled, all tiled up itong lugar. Whereas, ang akin ay kalahati ni mga one-third nito tapos two-third sa kanya. So, kailangan, sabi ng Holy Spirit, kukunin ko ito. Ako talaga, napakahirap, di ba? It is so hard to even imagine na, uh, sabi, na pag interesan ko yung four to five square meters when I have 800 square meters at hand already. Di ba? So, anyway, yan ang sinasabi ng Holy Spirit. Then, I had to obey. Amen. So, kahit na ganyang kaliit, kailangan ko mag-obey. So, hindi ako makatulog that night. Uh, when I woke up in the morning, uh, I, kasi my family was, was around, my mother and my sister, they just arrived from America. They live in New York. Tapos itong brother ko, si Chris, na yung sinabi kong kamukha ni Christopher De Leon, I uh, arrived from the Philippines. So, we were gathering together. They, they were just uh, around for, the, for a visit. Pagkatapos, so, since my mother was the eldest among us, sabi ko, she's probably the wisest. So, siya unang in-approach ko, mamang. Uh, may kinuhang itong aking property. So, in-explain ko sa kanya, itong property, showing her the lot index plan, itong property na to, ay itong portion na to, four to five square meters, ay uh, kinuha nitong kapitbahay. Hindi pa ako tapos magsalita. Ang sabi ng mother ko, anong sinasabi mo? Kukunin mo yan? Gusto mo ba ng away? What negativity! Ang mother ko was always positive and all of a sudden, sabi niya, uh, all of a sudden, sabi niya, gulo yan. I mean, hindi, hindi niya sinabi, gulo sinabi niya, uh, away yan. So then I went to my sister and my sister is a very, very wise woman uh, kasi siya ay vice president ng isang malaking company sa Manhattan, sa New York. And then, I told her, ate, mayroong five square meters dito na kinuha yung aming kapitbahay. Tapos, hindi pa rin ako tapos sinabi niya, Terry, tumigil ka na. Awa yan. Ang laki-laki na ng garden mo. Ahanin mo yan. Which is true. Diba? That was my first ano, insight. Ang laki-laki ng garden ko. Ba't ko pag-iinteresan yun? So, ay, sorry. Ay, maandar na. So, pumunta ako ngayon dito sa aking uh, uh, kapatid na si Chris. Sabi ko, Chris, ito yung situation nito. Kinuha ni, uh, tawagin natin Mr. Tan, but that's not exactly the name, okay? Sabi ni, kinuha ni Mr. Tan itong four to five square meters na to. Tapos sabi ni Chris, ate, malaking gulo yan. Malaking awa yan. Okay? So, in other words, uh, puro negative. Pagkatapos pagdating ngayon ni Robert, pupunta muna ako dito. Uh, pagdating ni Robert, uh, pumunta ako sa kanya at sinabi ko sa kanya, Daddy, uh, alam mo, ganito, ganito. In-explain ko sa kanya. Tinignan niya ako, are you out of your mind? Bakit mo? Gusto mo pang away? We've been discriminated enough by these people around us. Totoo yan. Kung ano-anong pinagre-report sa amin sa mga lands department, kung ano-ano pinaggagawa nila against us because they couldn't accept that Filipinos could earn such a beautiful property in Hong Kong. They couldn't possibly accept it. So, ngayon, aawayin ko sila. Kuko nila talagang away yan. So, sabi ng husband ko, end of subject. We're not going to discuss this ever again. So, that's it. Tapos na. So, kaya lang, in benefit number 16, which uh, sabi niya, praying in tongues makes you bold, then, kailangan ko mag-pray in tongues because I knew that praying in tongues would make me bold. Ibig sabihin, dahil kahit sinabi na ng asawa ko na hindi pwede, kailangan maging bold enough ako to face my husband again and to convince him otherwise. Tama? Kasi kung ako lang manghihina ako, kasi ano po si Robert, mainit ang ulo, nakakatakot yan. Pero, kailangan, uh, kailangan ko ng power ng Holy Spirit kasi pag ako, for example, ay tumunod sa Holy Spirit, He will take care of my business. I wouldn't even worry about yung temperament ni Robert na yan. I wouldn't worry about it because the Holy Spirit is going to take care of it. Amen. So, tingnan natin, bakit totoo yan? It makes you bold. In Ephesians 6, verses 19 to 20, ang sabi niya, And for me, that utterance may be given to me. Ano ibig sabihin ng utterance? Hindi ba sinasabi sa Bible, when you pray in tongues, the Holy Spirit gives you utterance? Di ba? And all we have to do is give that utterance a voice, 
we, all we need to do is speak those words that the Holy Spirit is giving to us. The problem with many of us is hindi tayo naniniwala galing sa Holy Spirit yan. Ang pinapaniwalaan natin, tayo lang ang nagsasalita. So dahil yun ang pinapaniwalaan mo, hindi walang power yun. So maniwala kang ang Holy Spirit ang nagbigay sa'yo ng utterance. So we know na ang utterance na yan is praying in tongues that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. So in other words pala, kailangan kong maging bold. Di ba? Kailangan kong maging bold. Kailangan kong mag-pray in tongues. Then I will be bold enough to talk to Robert. And then what is the purpose of me? Bakit ako kailangan makipag-usap kay Robert? Because yung end result nito will, ayan, will disclose the mystery of the gospel. Ibig sabihin, wow! Sasabihin ni Robert, wow! Sasabihin ng ate ko, wow! Sasabihin ng mother ko, wow! Sasabihin ni Chris, kapag nag-come to pass. Kasi may purpose ang Holy Spirit for revealing such things to us. Very unusual. Pero merong ibig sabihin ng Holy Spirit. It is a promotion when He tells you to do things. It is a, it is a, uh, ano, a transformation when He gives this to you. Okay. So, ang importante, that I will speak boldly. Ngayon, Ginaya ko, naisip ko yung ano, yung sinasabi ng uh, yung parable of Jesus, uh, eto, in Acts 2, 4, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to, hindi uh, <coughs> na ito, Acts 1, 8, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So, alam natin yan, we will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. That is if we believe it. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So, kailangan kong daanan itong, itong bagay na to, itong mga tests na to, para makapag-witness ako. Right now, I am sharing this testimony with you. But, kailangan ko ng boldness. During that time, na hirap na hirap ako, kailangan ko maging bold. Amen. So, para maging bold ako, I needed to speak in tongues. I tried to convince Robert every day for one month why I needed to reclaim that little piece of land. Araw-araw, di ba sabi niya, end of subject? So, araw-araw, tinatawagan ko yan, magtalas, di yan, na hindi, kailangan natin pumunta sa lawyer. Gusto ko lang marinig sa lawyer from his mouth na imposible yan, na walang pag-asa yan. Pag sinabi ng lawyer na walang pag-asa, then I will keep my mouth shut. I will, it's not gonna be a topic between us again. Yan ang assurance ko kay Robert. All I need is to talk to the lawyer. So, one month, every day, every day, Finally, after a month, pumay si Robert. See? And all this one month na ito, 30 days na kinakausap ko, he never got upset with me. Because the Holy Spirit was helping him to control his temper. Amen. So, finally, after one month, had passed, Robert had agreed to see the lawyer. So, uh, Luke 18.1, ang sabi niya, na, naisip ko tuloy, itong nangyari dito sa uh, yung parable ng widow, if you remember, Sabi niya, then Jesus spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Anong sabi niya? Huwag kang mag-lose heart. You have to pray. You have to pray all the time and not lose heart. Huwag kang mawala ng hope. Kapag wala ka ng hope, wala ng pag-asa yan. So, ang magbibigay sa'yo ng hope ay yung prayer na yan. Because the Holy Spirit will connect with you when you pray. Amen. At tutulungan ka, He's got the power. He's going to give that power to you when you connect to Him. Amen. And in Luke 18, 2, Now there was a widow in that city, and she came to Him, saying, Get justice for me from my adversary. So itong widow na to, kinukulit niya, itong judge, na sabi niya, papagpanalunin mo ako against my adversary, against my enemy. Papagpanalunin mo ako. Anong sagot nitong, ano, nitong judge? And he would not for a while. So ayaw niya. Ayaw niyang bigyan ng, uh, ng favor itong uh, widow na to. Ayaw niya for a while. But afterward, he said within himself, ano sabi niya? Yet because this widow troubles me, and I will avenge her. Because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her. Ibig sabihin, dahil punta ng punta itong at itong uh, widow na to sa kanya at naistorbo siya anong sabi niya? Sige pagbibigyan ko na siya dahil uh, ano para tumigil na siya lest by her continual coming she weary me in other words makukulitan itong judge na to kung hindi siya pinagbigyan tapos anong significance niyan? 
kailan kulitin ang kulitin? Itong widow, we don't judge, right? But there's something here that God says. That Jesus says, And shall God not avenge His own elect? Sino itong own elect? Tayo. Sino ang ipaglalaban nitong God na ito? Ang God natin, ang tatay natin, sino ipaglalaban? Tayo mga anak niya. And shall God not avenge His own elect? who cry out day and night to Him, though He bears long with them. So, itong crying out na ito, ibig sabihin na, Oh Lord, mawa ka sa akin, mamamatay na kawaway mga... That is not the way to deal with God. He has given you everything already. Ang cry out na ito, hindi yung cry lang. Crying, hindi yun. Ang cry out is, ito yung definition ng cry out. It means to say something loudly in an excited tone of voice. For example, may sakit ka, no, I have not been accepted because this is what God has given to me. He's given me healing already according to the word of God. It is written in Isaiah 53, 5, by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Yan ang gustong reaction ni Lord. Yan ang sumisigaw-sigaw because naririnig ka ni Satanas at takot na takot sa iyo because you are using your authority and power against him. Amen? So, Pero sinabi niya, sinabi niya, if you cry out to him day and night, di ba, ano sabi niya, ulitin natin to, cry out and, uh, who cry out day and night to him. So, hindi pwede, oh Lord, okay, uh, tulungan mo ko, and then that's it. Wala, no, 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 no. Hindi niya gusto yun. Gusto niya mag-meditate ka. Mag-meditate ka dun sa healing mo. Pag meditation is speaking the word of God, uh, kailangan alam mo yung scripture, for example, kung sakit ang, ang problema mo, you have to know the scripture that uh, that you have to declare for healing. Kaya nga, lagi natin sinasabing, by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. Kailangan, alam mo, ang revelation niya, that kung hindi ka makakuha ng revelation niya, hindi ka gagaling. Amen. So, ano nangyari? Sa Luke 18, 8, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. So, say, God will avenge me speedily. Sabi niya, nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Dito sinasabi yung faith. Ako ba'y naniniwala? Ako ba'y naniniwala na kaya kong makuha yung property na yan? Yan ang point. Naniniwala ka ba, Terry? I mean, we're talking of four to five square meters lang, ha? Pero this is the small picture. Napakalaki pala ng plano ni Lord John. Mag-uumpisa lang pala dyan yan. So anyway, so we went to see the lawyer and I received the most shocking news of all. Naku, ano yung shocking news na yan? So, sinabi ko sa lawyer kung ano yung situation. Pinakita ko yung law index plan sa kanya. Oops! Sabi ng lawyer, mm, I don't think that's even possible, Mrs. Chen. Sabi ko, why not? Tapos sabi niya, can you hold on a minute? Kasi kukunin daw niya yung batas ng Hong Kong. So, he came back around five minutes later and then he showed to us kung ano yung batas ng Hong Kong. Pag pala ang tao, for example, si Mr. Tan, ay na-occupy niya yung property ko for more than 20 years, siya na yung may-ari niyan. Oh my gosh! Alam niyo kung ganyan ang itsura ko, naglugulugo na ako. Naglugulugo na kami ni Robert dahil wala pala kami. Maybe kay Robert, masaya siya kasi wala nang gulo. But ako talagang wow! Naglugulugo. Pagdating namin sa bahay, papayag ba ako maglulugulugo? Tapos na yung moment na paglulugo. Ngayon, paglalaban ng Jesus na yung malarakas siya, masandala, para shikara. Yan na, magpipray thanks na ako. Pagkatapos, I will pray with my mind. Sasabihin ko, Lord, sinabi mo sa akin, makukuha ko. Then show me the way. Give me the wisdom. Yan ang kailangan natin. Hindi tayo maglulugo, na mag-iiyak, na wala na tayong pag-asa. Sinabi niya sa akin, binibigay niya sa akin yun. So, I have to work on it. Okay. And so, which brings us to benefit number 17. Praying in tongues helps you pray when you don't know what to pray. Well, I didn't know what to pray anymore, di ba? Kasi ang batas ng, ng Hong Kong, paano ko lalabanan yan? He is already the owner of that property. I don't have any jurisdiction over that property anymore. Lalabanan ko? Ano yung pagpipray ko na baguhin ang Hong Kong government ang kanyang batas? Kailan pa mangyayari yun? 19 kopong kopong? And so... Para marinig ko si sa, ang, ang, ang uh, wisdom ng ni God the Father para ibigay sa akin ng Holy Spirit, I need to stay strong. I need to persevere in prayer. Balarakasya marang. So, ilang araw yan. So, tingnan natin ang Romans 8.26. Ano sinasabi dito? Tingnan natin ha. When you don't know what to pray, 
Tingnan natin kung ano ang nag-back up na scripture dito. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. I was feeling weakness at the time. Kasi walang hope. And then sabi niya, likewise, the Spirit also helps. The Holy Spirit will help me. For we do not know what we should pray as for as we ought to. So, hindi ko alam kung ano ipagpipray ko, so the Holy Spirit will help me. But the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Ako, tingnan mo naman, napakabait ng Diyos natin. Diyos ko. Diyos ko, nangihina ako pag nakikita ko. Napakabait. Hindi siya sumusuko sa He never surrenders on us. Tingnan mo, He makes intercession for me. Dahil alam niya na malungkot ako dahil parang imposible ito. Batasan ang Hong Kong ang kalaban ko. Sabi niya, He makes intercession for us with groanings. Nag-groan siya. Nag-groan siya. Sa God the Father. Nag-groan siya. He was praying. on. Oh, he's not even praying on my behalf. He was praying for me. He was interceding for me. When you pray in tongues, kanyan ang ginagawa ng Holy Spirit. He intercedes for you. Okay. So no, when we pray in tongues, we express to God everything we are unable to put into words. Dahil hindi mo alam kung anong pagpipray mo. Anong pagpipray mo dyan? Eh, si Mr. Tana ang may-ari niya ng property na yan. Then when we pray in tongues, we're letting the Holy Spirit to pray the perfect outcome of our situation. Alam natin ang perfect outcome. Makukuha ko yung property na yan. But how? There was just no way. Kaya nga impossible situation. Then in John 14:26, sabi niya, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach me all things. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Ano ito? All things that I said to you. Ano sinasabi ni Jesus dito? Ang word of God. Ang promises niya. So, anong sabi niya dito? The Holy Spirit teaches us all things. And He, gets, he puts into our remembrance what Jesus had said to us through the word of God. Amen? So, I prayed and prayed in tongues day after day and the Holy Spirit spoke in my heart teaching me how to possess the land. Yan. And so, paano, paano kayo mapopossess yan, di ba? So, it brings us to the next benefit. Praying in tongues helps you yield to the Holy Spirit. It is not easy to yield to the Holy Spirit. Kasi, alam mo, imposible na, di ba? Bakit? Anyway, pakikita ko muna yung scripture. Praying in tongues helps you yield to the Holy Spirit and not to the unprofitable desires of the flesh. Okay. Ang sinabi ng Holy Spirit sa akin is, tawagan ko daw ang lawyer. Tawagan ko ang lawyer. At sabi ko sa lawyer to prepare the man letter that he would send to Mr. Tan. Pag tapos, itong demand letter nito will give him two weeks to make a decision to give back the land to me. Ang question nito, magagalit si Robert? Diba? Baka magagalit niya sa akin na Lord dahil sinabi na yun, hindi pwede. It's not possible. But then, sabi ko nga sa inyo, when you pray in tongues, bahala ang Holy Spirit dito kay Robert at bahala ang Holy Spirit dito kay lawyer, kay George. Hindi yan tunay na pangal, but he is the Lord kung tinatawag ko George. So, ang sabi dito, praying in tongues helps you yield to the Holy Spirit and not to the unprofitable desires of the flesh. Ibig sabihin, mag-yield ako sa sinasabi ng Holy Spirit, magpapadala ako ng demand letter through the lawyer, kasi kung ako ay pakikinggan ko yung ating flesh, pakikinggan ko anong sabi ng flesh, if you are uh, carnally minded, you will die. Diba? But if you're spiritually minded, ibig sabihin, mag-yield ako to the Holy Spirit, I will have life and peace. So, anong pipiliin ko? I will have life and peace. Mag-ooperate ako in the Spirit kung ano ang sinasabi ng Holy Spirit sa akin. Hindi ko papansin ito. Naku, napakahirap nito. Paano kaya ito? Magagalit si Robert o magagalit ng lawyer na ito? So, ngayon, in Galatians 5.17, For the flesh lusts against the Spirit. Diba? Ang flesh, hindi yan naniniwala sa Spirit. Hindi naglalapanan yan ang flesh and the Spirit. And the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. Naglalabanan yung spirit and flesh. So that you do not do the things that you wish. So ang wish ko tumigil na. Ang wish ko tama na. Ayoko nang habulin yung for. For, kung, hindi ba hali sana kung yan ay 1,000 square meters. Eh, 4 meter, 4 square meters ang liit, liit. My flesh is telling me, wag mo nang habulin, tumigil ka na. But no, the Holy Spirit's not like that. Sabi ko nga, kailangan kong dumaan dito sa test. 
For example, ang test na yan is grade 1 ka, di ba? Hindi ka makaakyat ng grade 2 kung hindi ka papasa sa grade 1. So, mag-exams ka dyan, marami exams dyan. Bago sa sabihin ng teacher, okay, you pass, now you move to grade 2. Bago ka pumunta ng grade 3, kailangan mo dumaan sa mga tests bago ka makakapunta sa grade 3. Hanggang mag-high school ka, hanggang mag-college, kailangan ng mga tests, ganun din sa Christians. Because yung spiritual is parallel to what is happening in the physical. Kung paano yung mga tests na dinadaanan sa physical, ganyan din ang mga tests natin dinadaanan in the spiritual. Kailang sa pagtayo nag-operate in the spiritual, meron tayong kasama. Sabi niya, the battle is not yours, the battle is mine. But when we operate with our own human wisdom and our own human power, then you are alone. Because I cannot help you. I cannot operate in your life if you operate in the flesh. Diba? So, naintindihan natin yun. So, that's why you don't do the things that you wish. Galatians 5, 18, but if you are led by the Spirit. So, we are to be led by the Holy Spirit. Sabi niya, you are not under the law. Itong law na to, actually yung mga law dun sa Old Covenant, dun sa Old Testament. But to me, I took it, I am not under the law of Hong Kong. Only in this particular, with this particular situation. Bakit? Anong sabi ng Holy Spirit? Sabi ko, Holy Spirit, explain to me. Bakit? Sabi mo sa amin, we have to obey the law of the land. Bakit hindi mo ako gustong mag-obey dito sa law of the land? Terry. Sabi niya, may laws na kinagawa ang land na hindi nanggaling sa akin. I gave you this property as your inheritance, and nobody has the right and authority to take it away from you, not even four to five square meters of that land, because it belongs to you. Ganyan pa strict ang Holy Spirit. He will not allow the enemy to steal it from me. Okay, so ngayon, lumalakas sa loob ko. Bringing tongues helps you to yield to the Holy Spirit and overcome the desires of the flesh. So, brings us to benefit number 19. Bringing tongues helps you overcome fear. So ngayon, takot na takot ako. Di ba? Takot na takot ako makipag makipag-usap kay Robert. But then when I spoke to Robert, hindi ba siya nagalit? Sabi niya, do what you have to do. And then, tumawag lang ako sa lawyer, tumawag lang, I didn't want to go there in person. Tumawag lang ako, sabi ko, George, I want you to prepare the man letter for Mr. Tan to return the property or that piece of land to me within two weeks. Now, if he doesn't return it, gusto kong bigyan siya ng juris, ng, ng, uh, ano, directive to file charges against Mr. Tan. Dahil yan ang narinig ko sa Holy Spirit. Tapos, so, ang lawyer, sabi niya, well, um, okay, if that's what you want, Mrs. Chang, I'll do it, but I'm not sure whether we're going to be successful in this, because you already know the law of Hong Kong. Sabi ko, yes, I know the law of Hong Kong, but at least you try. So ngayon, nagbilang ako ng two weeks, Nagpadala ang lawyer, magbilis ang action ng mga lawyers dito sa Hong Kong. Nagpadala ako na, so punta muna tayo dito sa 2 Timothy 1.6. Therefore remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you. Yung panahon na yun, natakot na takot ako. Kailangan mas stir up yung gift. Kasi mag-give up ka, ba? So nagpadala ngayon ng uh, demand letter itong si George dito sa K. Mr. Tan. And then I waited for two weeks. Tawag. Tinawagan ko si George. George, is there any response from Mr. Tan? Sabi niya, unfortunately, Mrs. Chang, there was nothing. There is nothing. I see. So, anong gagawin ko ngayon? Pipray ako na. Magpipray na naman in tongues. Magpipray na naman ako with my understanding. Sabi ko, Holy Spirit, hindi po nag-respond. What do I do now? What do I do now? Tandaan natin na overcome ko na yung fear dahil, di ba? Anyway, ito sinasabi niya. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the, the, the gift of God, which is in you. Ano itong gift na to? The gift. Ano ba itong gift na to? It's the gift of tongues. How do we know that? There are nine spiritual gifts. How do we know this is the gift of tongues? And nine spiritual gifts. The gift of healing, gift of uh, uh, working of miracles, gift of faith, the gift of prophecy, gift of word, word, uh, gift of word of wisdom, gift of word knowledge, gift of discerning between spirits, gift of tongues, gift of prophecy, and gift of uh, interpretation of tongues. So, isa lang yung gift of tongues dyan. Paano natin alam? Stir up the gift. You know why? Because of all the gifts of the Spirit, the gift of tongues is the only gift that can stir you up at will. Ano ibig sabihin yan? Ito lang ang kaya mong pigilin at hindi pigilin. Ito lang kaya mo. Pwedeng halarabak, kashimara, tapos tumigil na ako, tinabad na ako. It is under your power. Hindi katulad pag halimbang mo nag-preach ako sa isang church, Pagkatapos, 
darating ang power ng Holy Spirit, I cannot stop the power. Like, I can stop praying in tongues. Or I can't continue praying in tongues. It's the only gift. Kaya gusto niya, stir up the gift. Praying in tongues so powerful because it is under our control. Amen. 2 Timothy 1.7 For God has not given us a spirit of fear. Hindi ako kailangang matakot. It's a spirit. Although yung fear is an emotion, but the emotion comes from a spirit. Evil spirit. But God has not given it to us, but He gave to us the spirit of power and love and of a sound mind. So, binigyan ako ng power. Binigyan ako ng love. Mag- Ay, mahal ko lahat ng tao. Mahal ko, wala akong, wala akong ganit kahit kanino. Amen. Mahal ko lahat. Ay, binigyan ako ng maraming power. My gosh. Kung sa, ano nang narating ko dito sa buhay ko because of the power of the Holy Spirit. And binigyan ako ng sound mind. Yan ang wisdom. Binibigay sa akin. We got every single day yan ang binibigay sa akin. So, we're being reminded that praying in tongues is one key to living free of fear and experiencing power, love, and a sound mind. Practice natin ang praying in tongues if you want these things. So I spoke to Robert. I spoke to the lawyer. What happened? I waited for two weeks. Alam na natin ang story, you know? So it brings us to benefit number 20. Ito yung pinakalas na take up natin dito. Uh, when you pray in tongues, it gives you discernment. Okay, ngayon. Hindi sumagot si Mr. Tan. Diba? So, pray in tongues, pray in tongues. Ayan, pangalara ka siya, marana, zora, vash, miyara, diyara, no, kolara ba siya? Oh, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, ano pong gagawin ko? Wala akong naririnig. Halara ba siya, kandara ba siya? Persevere! Persevere, huwag kang ihinto. Halara ba ka? Kung ano yung pinaka-problema mo, huwag mo ihintoan yan. I mean, hindi ko sinasabi, dire-direcho ka for eight days, hindi ka nakakaino. Hindi ko sinasabi yan. Kumain ka. Ano yung normal routine mo pa rin, but you pay more attention dito sa revelation ng Holy Spirit sa iyo. You are not going to get the revelation if you don't pray in tongues. So magpipray ka yun na, Hallara ba, Shandara ba, Hallara na ka siya. Holy Spirit, ano po bang gagawin? Wala. And then all of a sudden, narinig ko ang voice ng Holy Spirit. Anong sabi niya? Terry, you send Leo, itong staff ko. Pero na akong tatlong uh, helpers sa bahay. Dalawa, nag-asikaso garden lang because I have a big garden. Yung si Leo speaks fluent English. Kaya siya siguro yung inasign ni Lord. Sabi niya, papuntahin ko daw si Leo doon sa bahay ni Mr. Tan. Diyos ko, nanginig-ginig ang buong katawan ko. Kasi gusto ng Holy Spirit, kausapin ko si Mr. Tan. My gosh, paano kung kakausapin ng tao ito? Kinukuha ko yung property niya. Kaya nga ako dumaan sa lawyer para hindi ako maharap sa kanya, di ba? Pero Holy Spirit, hindi ganyan. Kung ano inutos niya, yun ang gawin mo. Otherwise, you lose. You lose out. So ngayon, tinawa ko si Leo. Pero bago ako pumunta doon, para ma-overcome ko yung fear, Allah Rabba, kashindara na kayo magka-boldness ako, Allah Rabba, kashindara na. Hanggat wala akong complete peace in my heart na atakihin itong pinapagawa ni Lord sa akin, hindi ako lalaban. Kakainin ako sa tanas ko, wala akong faith. Ang naglalagay ng faith sa atin, ang Holy Spirit. So Allah Rabba, kaya you persevere, Allah Rabba, kashindara. Tapos all of a sudden, Oh, may boldness na ako. Wala na fear. Tinawag ko na si Leo. Leo, pumunta ka kay Mr. Tan. Dali mo yung cellphone mo. Dahil kakausapin ko siya ang phone. Wala akong katakot-takot. Then si Leo pumunta. Sabi niya, Mr. Tan, Mrs. Chang would like to speak to you. Alam mo itong tao na to? Sinisigaw-sigawan ako niyan, Mr. Tan. Wala respeto sa amin because we're Filipinos. And he's so powerful in our place because his brother is the village master. Kumbaga, yung barangay chief yung kanyang kapatid. Very powerful guy. Pagkatapos, tina- kinausap ko, Mr. Tan, this is Mrs. Cheng. Sabi ko, did you receive the letter from my lawyer? And then he said, yes, I have. He said, did you respond to my lawyer? And then, sabi niya, no. So, you haven't responded. So, I have given the directive to my lawyer to file charges against you. So if you don't want me to file a suit against you, you have to give me your answer now, today, because that's the last day on the 14th day. Tapos sabi niya, Mrs. Cheng, can I speak to my wife first? Wow, oh my gosh. My gosh, this is the first time na ganyang kabait tong si Mr. Tan. Talagang unbelievable ang transformation na halos magmakahawa siya sa akin. And then, 
Anong ginawa ko? Anong gagawin mo during that one hour period? Ikaw ba'y kakain? Ikaw magtutuloy? Ikaw magpapay? No! Laban yan! Because oh, ang kalaban natin ay nag-ano, nag-influence sa mind ni Mr. Tan. Huwag kang papayag. You don't lose it. Isipin mo, liliit na lang itong itong lanay area mo dito. Paano darating mga bisita mo? Wala nang space ang mga bisita mo dito. Kung ano-ano ilalagay. Parang yung mga Israelites. Di ba? Ano takot na takot ang mga Israelites na sumugod? Di ba? Takot na takot. Sila sa nangyari sa kanila, napating lahat sila. Except for those two people who are willing to obey the Holy Spirit. So, ano mo yun ang nangyari? After what? Yung one hour period na yan, laban na, kachamba, constant, dollar, kimachandar, ganyan. Laban ako lang mag-isa naman sa third floor ng bahay. Kahit magsisigaw ako doon, hindi ako maririnig. And then, all of a sudden, one hour na, Leo, pumunta ka kay Mr. Tan. Tali mo yung phone because I want to talk to him. Pagkatapos, Hello, Mr. Tan. This is Mrs. Cheng. Sabi ko, may I know your decision. Mrs. Cheng, ano palagay nyo? Binigay o hindi? Another 5,000 pesos, piro lang. Binigay. Sabi niya, okay, Mrs. Cheng. Sabi niya, you can take over the property. Alam nyo, with the takeover on property, mawawal na nga yung passageway niya kasi entrance and exit na ginagamit niya yan. Pag kinuha ko yan, hindi na niya magagamit yan. Dadaan siya ngayon sa ibang passageway. I don't know kung saan siya dadaan. Dahil isasarado ko yun. Ngayon, bakit strategic itong 4 to 5 square meters na to? Dahil yung 4 to 5 square meters na yan, pahaba yan. 1 meter ang laki hanggang mahaba 5 meters. Dahil gagawin kong plant box yan at magtatanim ako ng malalaking puno para, para bigyan ng complete privacy itong bahay ko. Hindi makikita ng kapitbahay. Alam mo, privacy... Privacy, privacy, uh, talagang sa real estate, ang privacy is so important that multiply niya exponentially ang value ng property if you have privacy. Yun ang binigay sa aking desire ni Lord na lumaban dito because of that. Gustong gusto ko. Alam nyo, there was one point in time because dumadating yung mga, yung mga tractors dito sa, sa bahay namin. Dahil ginagawa yung nire-renovate kasi uh, slopey, may terrain. So, nagbayad pa ako kay Mr. Tan 30,000 Hong Kong dollars equivalent to 210,000 pesos. Dalawang daang libong piso ang pinayad ko para sa kanya para lang padaanan niya kami. And I didn't even know I own that property pala. I had two architects at hindi man nila alam na ako pala yung may-ari ng property na yan. Nagbabahay kami, bibigay kami sa kanya. So, nakikita mo ang ginagawang deception ng kaaway? And then, the Holy Spirit is always there to reveal things to you. But, that was not the end of the story. So, anyway, kinuha ko nin, I had love for Mr. Mr. Tan. Sabi ko, Mr. Tan, I'm going to renovate your lanai. I make it really look good. So, at my own expense, bilang tulong ko sa kanya, ang saya-saya niya. Ang saya-saya niya, so pinagawa ko yan. So, anyway, that was not the end of the story. Oh, the great rejoice ako kasi na-plant ko na yung plant box ko, na-build ko na yung plant box ko, na-plant ko na yung mga malaking halaman, mga malaking puno. Hindi ko na nakikita yung bahay ni Mr. Mr. Tan. Yung pala, umpisa lang yan. Dahil sabi ni Holy Spirit sa akin, Terry, get the lot index plan again. Tapos sabi ko, naku, what is it this time? So, kinuha ko yung lot index plan at pinagay ko na naman dito sa table ko. Sabi ng Holy Spirit, it's time for you to conquer the road. Oh my gosh! The road! Alam mo yung the road na to? Ito, pagkikita ko sa inyo, the road na to, sana ba? Eh, yan ang road. Ito, it was a, it used to be a road before. Diyan dumadaan yung mga tao, yung mga kapitbahay namin, diyan dumadaan, papuntang highway. And little did I know, the road na yan belonged to us. Or maybe, alam ko, pero... Or, pakit ko naman, pakikilaman ang road na yan. Ginagamit ng mga tao yan. In fact, they park their cars dito, dito sa likod, diretso yan, hanggang doon. Mag, magpa-park sila ng mga kotse dyan. So, sabi ko, Holy Spirit, you want me to possess itong road na to? Yes. Do it. Tapos, so, sinabi ko na naman kay Robert, and we went to the lawyer. Sabi na, Lord, definitely not. Kasi sabi niya, road. It is a road. People pass through that road. Mrs. Chang, please. And, and this road has been there and they've been using it for many, many years, more than 30 years, probably 40 years. You cannot just possess that road. So, ang ginawa ko, 
pumunta ako sa lunch department to check. Ang sabi ng lunch department, pwede kong i-take over itong road. But, kung mag-demanda yung mga tao, then I have to face the consequences. Yan ang sabi sa akin ng lunch department. So, anyway, I had to be ready. I have to be prepared for this. So, ngayon, binigyan ko na naman ng directive itong lawyer na to, na sulatan niya lahat, itong mga kapitbahay, at sabihin na isasarado ko na itong road na to. Can you imagine kung anong kaguluhan ang nangyari dito? Oh my gosh! It was so scary! But I was not scared at all. Why? I was praying in tongues. I had all the boldness to do it. I had no fear. So ngayon, one and a half years, ang lawyer ayaw niya. Every time I spoke to him on the phone, no Mrs. Chen, it's not time yet. I'm still checking. I'm still investigating. Kung ano anong reasons niya. Because he was scared. He was representing me. Until finally, sabi na Holy Spirit sa akin, Terry, it's time to possess the land. And we were so prepared. Months before pa, months before me, one year before pa, nakaredy na yung aking materialis and of course they, they wouldn't see. Nakatago niya, nandiyan na yung mga bricks, mga hollow blocks, nandiyan na yung mga yero, nandiyan na yung mga bakal, nandiyan na yung mga bakal, lakal, nakaredy na yan. I am ready to possess my land. Sabi ng Holy Spirit, I'm being backed up by the sovereign God, the God who created all these things, including my property. Diba? I am backed up by Him. So if God is for you, who can be against you? So ngayon, dahil sinabi na nagbigay ng directive sa akin, tinawagan ko ang lawyer, sabi ko, George, I am possessing the land right now. Oh, Mrs. Shank, please don't. Binaba ko lang. And then, sabi ko, Leo, Herbert, do it now. Naku, ang pinis nila. I mean, bago yun, kasi nakapag yung mga kotse nila dito, pinaalis ko muna, hinintay namin makaalis lahat kasi may pasok sila sa mga opisina. Nung wala nang kotse dito, sabi ko, okay, Leo, Herbert, do it now. Naku, napakabilis sila. All of them, nasarado. Ayan, ayan, sinarado namin. Na, nasarado na. Nagulat na lang ang mga tao. Nung uuwi sila, nakasarado na ang <laughs> road. Wala na makadaan. Naku, my gosh. It was not easy dahil lahat ng government departments pumunta sa amin, lands department, ang, uh, ang town planning department, ang buildings department, pati fire department. Nireklamo kami ng mga tao dito. May mga lawyers sila. And then, wala naman silang nagawa. Hindi naman kami nag-hire ng lawyer, talabanan sila. Wala. Ang lawyer ko wala, nakaupo lang doon. Walang lumalaban. And then, all of a sudden, nag-die down lahat. Itong mga government departments, they cooperated with me. Kasi sabi ng mga government departments, why don't you sue her? Sue them. Walang gusto mag-sue sa amin. Why? Tiniti ko mong bibig nila. Pinipigil sila ng mga anghel. Holy Spirit nakabantay sa amin. And so, anong nangyari din sa property na to? Yung price niya ang naging 10 times over. 10 times over. Ang presyo niya. So, naging... I mean, talagang super sikat ang bahay na to. Kasi, it's very hard to find a house in Hong Kong. You know, in Hong Kong, it is the most expensive place in the world. Most of the people in Hong Kong do not have their own property. And God gave us a lot of properties. And one of them is this property. At dahil dito sa, and it, it, dito sa Hong Kong, walang mga ganito. Kapiting lang ang mga big garden na ganito. Puro high-rise na condominium buildings. Ang liliit ng mga sukat yan. Minsan, is one bedroom yan, anim ang nakatira. Ba't kami, tingnan mo. Isa lang yan sa mga binigay ni Lord sa akin. So that is exactly what happens when you pray in tongues. The impossible becomes possible. So, kayo ba ay magkakagana na mag-pray in tongues from now on? Magka magkakagana because He will reveal things to you. Katulad ng ginawa sa akin. So, balik tayo dito sa... Benefit number 20, when you pray in tongues, uh, it gives you discernment. So, yung discernment, yung alam mo kung what is right and what's wrong. Anong, alam mo kung evil spirit yan, o sa Holy Spirit yan, bibigyan ka niya. That is the reason why. Alam mo ang Holy Spirit ang kumakausap sa'yo because He gives you discernment. Sabi niya, these things also speak, not, these things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches. Okay? And then, I realized that I was only seeing the small picture, whereas God had a whole lot bigger picture in mind. Gusto ni Lord mag-prosper kami beyond measure. 
isang bahay lang, yun lang ang ginawa. And then, ten times ang, ang value ng part. This experience had transformed my life. Kasi nakita ko how the Holy Spirit operates in my life. And that's why I'm sharing it with you. So, 1 Corinthians 2.14, But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. So, foolishness yan. Yung kukunin ko yung four square meters, foolishness yan. But, sabi niya, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So, kailangan mag-operate ako dito sa spiritual. Kasi kung ako mag-operate dito sa flesh, hindi ko na makukuyan. I could have lost. Isipin nyo? Yung daan na yan could park as many as eight cars kung arranged. Sinong may car park na ganyan? In Hong Kong. Isang car park mo, mas mayamang ka, maswerte, maswerte ka na kung mayroon ko isang car park. Magpe-pray ako. Pagkatapos, gusto ko mag-worship tayo. May maganda tayong song. Gusto ko, gusto ko talagang ang Holy Spirit, ang power ng Holy Spirit, ma-infill tayo today, right now. Para ma-overcome natin ito mga yung darkness na yan. Kailangan mag-light up kasi you heard the word. Pinakita ko yung word. Now it's up to us to send the fire. How do we do that? We pray in tongues and then we worship. Okay? So, mag, uh, tatanggap muna ako dito sa mga tao para sa worship, kung gusto nyo tapusin, okay. Kung ayaw nyo tapusin, okay din. Okay? Pero ako, I would suggest talaga spend time with Him. Okay? Anyway, sinas prayer para sa mga bagong nag-attend ngayon. Maraming uh, talagang tinawag si Nayana, si Neil. Okay, so gusto, hindi kayo makaka-experience ng, ng power ng Holy Spirit. Hindi pupunta sa inyo si Jesus. Hindi pupunta sa inyo Holy Spirit kung ikaw hindi mo tatanggapin si Jesus. Kung hindi mo siya tatanggapin. So ngayon, magpipray ako. Very, very simple prayer. At you uh, treat this prayer as if it is your own. Okay? So close your eyes kung sino man yun. O kaya, hindi ka sigurado ikaw ay na-born again, Magka, magkakaroon ng turnaround ng iyong buhay from now on as you receive Jesus. Okay, Heavenly Father, please forgive me for all my sins. And thank you for your forgiveness. As simple as that, pinatawad ka ng Diyos Ama. Ganyan kadali ang pagpapatawad, basta nang galing yan sa puso mo. And then, Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Holy Spirit, come, mold me, and change me, transform me to be that person that you've created and designed to be. Father, Jesus, baptize them in the Holy Spirit. Yung mga nakareceive kay Jesus right now, or even yung mga nag-receive na kay Jesus na hindi pa nagpipray in tongues, Father, baptize them right now. In Jesus' name, I release right now the baptism of the Holy Spirit on each of you na tumanggap kay Jesus. And now, the evidence is praying in tongues. Speak ka lang. Open your mouth. Whatever word. Huwag kang matakot. Whatever word comes out, that came from the Holy Spirit because you're now believing. Okay, lahat tayo sabay-sabay. Amen. Kakatok tayo dito sa heaven para maayos lahat ng ating mawala yung mga darkness. Ayan ang pumunta yung light, yung mga breakthrough magdatingan, yung mga may sakit gagaling, yung mga may problema sa pera, mawawala in Jesus supernaturally. Amen. Yung mga may problema sa asawa, yung mga may problema sa negosyo, yung mga problema sa church, problema sa anak, problema sa boyfriend, problema sa girlfriend, problema kahit anong problema. Pag nalagyan ang binigyan tayo ng revelation at binigyan tayo ng light, that is it. You receive the supernatural breakthrough. Kaya tayo lahat, mag-pray in tongues for just one minute. Halarabakasya maranda sivabashi. All rise. Tumayo tayo. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, nandito po kami and we are praying in tongues. Kung ano yung ginawa nyo sa akin, gagawin nyo sa kanila. So that they will receive the breakthrough that they've been desiring for in their hearts. In Jesus' name, Allah rakishya marano soravasmiyan de rakila mahalaradi. 
Hem babara şikalar ama kaşan bandırana son da başmıyor. Halleri nikalara başmıyor. Bahara nikala başmıyor. Halleri kandara vibara na kolara da koşuyamara niyanda. Halleri diyen başındara hani yara bası bir kişi marana kalara ana si. Dara no kolloro noşdi. Vakan mayihi ya. Bana yine oyun nakku para nakakata bulmanya nakku vakan makta vajan. Because in din nakakat this is no laughing matter. This is very serious business with the Holy Spirit. Kahit nakakata bayu sinasabi hindi ka dapat tatawa tawa dyan. Because this is the truth. This is the truth and the Holy Spirit wants to embrace you right now. He wants to envelope you right now. He wants to get you out of that pit where you are right now, where you're in right now. Take you out of that problem. Take that problem out of your life for good, permanently, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, hey, amen. Lord, salamat po. Nirilis ko mga blessings sa lahat ng nanonood right now. It's mga manonood pa sa YouTube or social media, sa mga Instagram or whatever, kung saan po kami mapapanood right now in Jesus' name. And thank you, Father, that you will manifest the power of the Holy Spirit. Dito sa mga tao ito, hindi lang makakareceive sila ng blessings, Father, but sila, papadala mo sila na magtuturo, magiging discipler instead of being disciples. At kami ay magmumultiply exponentially for your glory in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen.